First of all, choose the right glassware for any drink that you make. All right, the glass is the star, is the canvas of a drink. All right, so if it looks great and if it looks elegant, you know you already think it's a festival, festive time, right? Then the, the second most important tips is the quality of ice. Make sure that you have. There is a three type of ice. There is crack ice. The ice that you put in the center of your pole will start to uh, pump and it starts to dissolve very quickly, right? And you, 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 you slap it and it disintegrates. So that ice immediately will dilute your drink. So that is taboo, right? Then you have a crush ice. But you don't want the crush ice at Christmas. It's not the tiki night, you know. It is about the elegant night. So make the effort that maybe you can make your own uh, homemade uh, ice. And um, remember, ice is like uh, the heat for the sh for the chef when he's cooking, right? So the good quality of ice it is a must. And then prepare yourself, okay? Uh, do a mental uh, thing, you know, if you need to make a drink that you know that it takes a little longer than normal, you can also maybe pre-prepare that drink and put it in the freezer or in the fridge so it's nice and cold, you know, and uh, so the only thing you have to do is to put it in a mixing glass or show off, make it, put it in a shaker and shake and uh, say, well, music, music maestro. And, um, you know, so you, you, you're you ready for it. Of course, there was a time when lots of pubs in London were still like, you know, no blacks, no Irish, no gypsy kind of signs up. You know, shaking us dirt, the, uh, the, the eternal question. And um, it's something that I think that a lot of uh, home mixologists get wrong, perhaps because it's, you know, fun using a cocktail shaker so people think that we should shake everything but there is a, there, there is some some rules that we should follow really and really when we're shaking a drink we're shaking it because we want to you know mix everything together into a homogenous mix also when we're stirring it the same ultimate goal uh, but uh, some ingredients mix together very free and easily you know we, you know when we're making a negroni the gin the campari the sweet vermouth they all blend together very well so we don't need to shake it but when we've got a heavier thicker substance in there like maybe we're using some fruit juice or we're using egg white in a sour or cream in an alexander something like that then then we need we need to shake it um so as a kind of uh, as a general rule uh if all the ingredients are alcoholic probably don't need to shake it so I, as an englishman it pains me to say it but james bond got it wrong and my scene is should definitely be stirred not shaken <laughs> What we thought we would talk you through is a peppermint bark paint. So the inspiration came for us, we absolutely love peppermint bark uh, and we wanted to make a cocktail with it. So we wanted to think about the best way to also put that chocolate element on a glass. And it's really simple and it's definitely something that you could do at home. So in here we have equal parts of cacao butter and white chocolate. So white cooking chocolate as well, just making sure that they're both stable uh, once they're melted. So with it, you just need to put them in a microwave and just keep melting until they come together. So over melting it will actually split it and it won't, uh, it won't actually stick onto the glass nicely. So just making sure that it's consistent and you can see here it's, it's liquid but, um, and it has a nice like thickness to it, but it's still gonna be easily to paint onto the glass as well. Um, pardon me. <laughs> For the peppermint flavor, we added just a drop of peppermint essence. So that way, just kind of has that nice little kick there. Um, so with the glass that you have, you need to make sure that it's room temperature. And then you're just gonna take a little bit of the paint, kind of coat the brush. And then we're just gonna do a half, uh, a half rim of the paint, but you could, you know, you could do whichever you'd like. And I'm just gonna rotate the glass in my hand as I go, which kind of makes it stay a little bit. And then all I'm gonna do with kind of crush up can of cane, I literally just um, crush it out myself. You could use like a rolling pin or anything and try and make sure that you cover all of it. You definitely would want something that has a lot of body to it. And for this particular drink, we are making a Sazerac. So something that is a little bit more heavier, 
a little bit more of a longer drink stirred down and it just complements really well especially with the texture because the paint with the cacao butter will add a little bit of kind of a bit more body kind of like that richness that comes from it so it just kind of complements the drink as well especially if you do have something that's a bit boozier it's just going to mellow it out a little bit on the palate too. most uh, kitsch we ever go so just like beautiful and to garnish i'm going with candied orange slices dipped in a rich dark chocolate so when you when you have guests um sometimes you're never, never quite sure uh, what you know if everybody likes the same thing some people like certain different taste profiles so what i've been doing recently is almost like a garnish shearing platter almost like a charcuterie board for, for garnishes uh, so before your guests arrive if you're making martinis or gnts for the for the evening um, you can get your shearing board your chopping board and you can do lemon zests you can do rosemary you can do orange peel all of the different zests and all the different garnishes that you might be thinking of even your candied orange dipped in chocolate Put it on a stick, almost like a big skewer. Everybody can just pick the one that they like and pop it into their drink, and maybe they'll try something that they've never had before. Yeah, so we could say that. I'm just, cause I guess this is, I mean, this is like an after dinner, Christmas after dinner. Super easy to do at home. All you need to do, obviously, get a nice fresh orange, give it a bit of a wash, slice it into the slices, you know, your average style, like half wheel. Um, you need to sprinkle it with a little bit of caster sugar or like granulated brown sugar and then just pop that into the oven on a baking tray and you just want to dehydrate it uh, so it wants to be on a low heat for about an hour just keep an eye on it make sure it doesn't burn you just want to reduce all of the the sort of natural uh, juices that are in there dry it out and all the sugar that will then sort of embed into the orange slice becomes really really sweet and candied uh, when they're done let them cool standard melt some chocolate give a little dip put it back onto the baking tray put it in the fridge and you've got beautiful candied orange and dipped chocolate slices um, I think you want it to accompany uh, so in your garnish uh, game if you like to level it up just a little bit make it look a little bit more posher than it might be uh, just obviously take your lemon zest that you've done with a vegetable peeler simple pinking shears and all you're gonna do is crimp the edges off and it just leaves you with something like a little bit of a a little bit of a spiky, zesty uh, garnish. And then just give it a little bit of a twist. And then you can just put a little cocktail stick through there and serve it on your cocktails. On the side, you can sit on the side of a glass. Just minimal effort and you've just got something that just looks like you've, you've made the effort. I always say that uh, Christmas is a special time. It's a time where you want to enjoy with friends and family. And, uh, and sometimes the, the centerpiece of any happiness is to have a good drink. So just make that little effort because uh, really a, a, a great cocktail is a great journey. From the beginning, the time it hits your lips, to the middle palate, to the end, right? And when you taste something nice and delicious, right? Um, the world seems to be a better place, really does, all right? So therefore, Salute and happy and Merry Christmas to all of you. I'm going to have something that will wrap me up. Mm. I made this drink so I know how good it is.